assalamu alaikum students today i'm going to start the practical 5 and its title is rocks and weather instruments so this uh, practical is basically a theoretical portion to describe the rocks and its identification and weather instruments okay so everybody knows that uh, rocks are basically uh, our earth is uh, composed of many type of the rocks or anything which is responsible to constitute the surface of the earth is called as rock whether it is a solid material or a hard material like a granite or a soft material like a clay so anything which is responsible to formulate the uppermost layer of the earth surface that is basically and commonly known as rocks okay how many types do we have the, uh, the rocks there are three main types of the rocks which have also uh, been uh, like covered uh, in our theory portion so one is named as igneous rock number two category of the rock is called sedimentary rock and third one is the metamorphic rock so let's start with the with the one type of the rock and um, in this practical there is a requirement uh, of just a brief introduction of the type of the igneous rock but uh, that will be the write up of this practical while on the blank pages of your practical notebook you will be drawing uh, some uh, diagrams of the igneous rocks or you can take the pictures of igneous rock and get the printed colored copy of those rocks and you can paste them on the on that blank page so different igneous type of the rocks uh, the, the granite or any example uh, of that stone and the material you can use them uh, by getting the pr colored printed pages and then paste them on the blank page so there is like a two type of the options you can do whatever you want okay let's start the igneous rocks uh, because you have you have done this the whole portion in a complete chapter in your uh, physical geography the chapter number uh, three rocks so i will give you just a brief introduction of the igneous rock because we have done so uh, much in, in detail the igneous rock its type its characteristics with all the diagrams and the example okay so the igneous word is a basically a latin word uh, need to be noticed that it is a latin word and which uh, in the latin word the word igneous means fire and uh, the definition of the igneous rock is like igneous rocks is basically formed by the cooling and solidification of the molten material and uh, now you know this thing that uh, after covering or after uh, like crossing few kilometers under the earth surface you will be able to reach at that area where the hot molten material is present at that molten material is basically named as magma and whenever that magma are uh, because magma every time try to reach on the surface of the earth and once it gets succeeded and erupted the earth crust then it will be called as lava and till the time it remains inside the earth it will be named as magma so either on the surface of the earth or inside the earth surface whenever that molten material uh, you will call it as lava on the surface and uh, magma when it is inside the earth surface both the the, the the categories whenever it will try to cool and solidify the type of the rocks which will be formed named as igneous rocks okay so this is basically the description of the igneous rocks you will be writing it down on your uh, lining pages and you will be drawing a diagram a very nice neat diagram of igneous rock or you can take the image of any igneous rock any important image of igneous rock get the colored print of that is uh, material and paste them on the blank page so this is all about igneous rock let's quickly move on to the sedimentary rocks okay here you can see the second type of the rock which is named as sedimentary rocks and as we have done very much in detail the sedimentary rocks but uh, again there is a definition sedimentary rocks are basically formed by the decaying and decomposition of the crust into sediment so crust was basically formed by the igneous rock now the igneous ro rocks due to some reason the chemical the physical biological or any type 
of the process of erosion that material is going to get decay and decompose and obviously in this process not only uh, like the non living non living material rather some living material is also responsible to decay and decompose but the final output or the final result uh, after decaying and decomposition which we will get that is the sediment so once once the crust will be uh, transfer uh, transformed themselves into the sediment particle so sediment is basically the base of the sedimentary rocks to form once the sediments have been formed because there is a large variety of the sediments as we can see sediment it could be a silt it could be a clay sand or any other small rock fragment once all the sediments will be formed by the decaying and decomposition of the crust material that silt clay sand and small rock fragment will be responsible to form the sedimentary rocks okay and these these uh, uh, fragments or these sediments are basically formed by the process of physical and chemical weathering or by the process of rock so now here we can define the sedimentary rocks are formed by the decaying and decomposition of crust into sediments and later on there is a detail uh, what does it mean the sediment okay so this this is all about the sedimentary rocks the layers rock the stratified rocks ma mainly made up of sediments okay here is a third category of the uh, rock that is known as metamorphic rock and uh, as we uh, we know this thing that rocks are basically follow a cycle and that cycle is called a rock cycle okay one one more important thing as uh, we have done the sedimentary rocks as well so we we'll, you will do the same thing you need to draw the diagram of the sedimentary rocks in front of the blank page or uh, you can get a very uh, good um, print uh, image of sedimentary rocks and a colored printed copy and you can paste them on the blank page so uh, move on to the third type of the rock the metamorphic rock the word metamorphic has been derived from the two greek word the meta means change and morphy means change okay so when the shape has been changed okay shapes the composition the characteristics of the rocks when it gets changed the another type of the rock which is formed is named as metamorphic rock so igneous rocks were the most primitive type of the rocks when the earth came into being the first type of the rock which were formed on the surface of the earth especially on the crust most importantly and inside the earth those rocks were the igneous rock and due to the decaying and decomposition of the crust due to some reason and by the processes of the physical and the chemical weathering the second type of the rocks which were formed so that's why the, the, these rocks were named as secondary rocks or the sedimentary rocks and the tertiary type of the rock the third category of the rock is called as metamorphic rock because these are the rocks basically based upon igneous and the sedimentary rocks but when ever the igneous or sedimentary rocks due to some reasons they disintegrated into the uh, finer particle uh by heat or by pressure because in metamorphic rock the change in the shape basically it does occur when there is influence of great heat and pressure so igneous and sedimentary rock whenever they go under the process of uh, extra heating and pressure then the third category of the rock is formed which is named as metamorphic rock and again the metamorphic rocks due to a lot of heat and pressure again the material will be uh, uh, like uh, uh, melted and that material once it will be melted then uh, there is a, a opportunity that material could be transformed again into magma so again the magma one once it form so uh, the magma cooling and solidification the process of igneous rocks takes start so this is how the cycle of the rocks move igneous rocks the most primitive rocks turns themselves into sedimentary rock sedimentary and igneous both type of the rocks turn themselves into metamorphic rock and metamorphic rocks when a certain amount of heat and pressure is required 
टू टर्न इजनियस एंड सेडिमेंट्री इन टू मेटामोफिक वंस द प्रेशर एंड द हीट गेट एक्सीड दैट मटीरियल विच वॉज रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू फॉर्म द मेटामोफिक रॉक दोज मेटामोफिक रॉक्स विल टर्न दैम सेल्फ अगेन इन टू द मोल्टन मटीरियल सो ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ द अर्थ वी कैन सी द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ द रॉक द इजनियस रॉक मोस्टली वी कैन सी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ लाइक ग्रेन आइट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मटीरियल यूज इन द बिल्डिंग प्रोसेसिस एंड डेकोरेटिव items and uh, here we can take an example of the sedimentary rocks like coal that is a uh, uh, chalk that is an, an important uh, type of the sedimentary rocks and there are also some other examples but i'm using very common example which you can uh, see uh, in your surrounding uh, the metamorphic rock so the example of the metamorphic rock the most important example is marble so this is all about the types of the rocks and the uh, the very brief and important information regarding them now after writing up all of them on your lining page you need to draw the, their respective diagrams on their blank page i'm not giving you any diagram in this practical you will be draw by yourself by finding out the most important diagrams of the igneous sedimentary and the metamorphic rocks draw them on your blank page and complete this Uh, part of the practical five. This is the part. Uh, the second part of this practical is weathering instrument. Okay, weather instrument. So there are number of weather instrument. We will discuss one by one. Okay. Uh, the second part of the practical five is related to weather instrument. So there are number of weather instrument we can see on the board. I have just written their names. Uh, the first weather instrument most commonly most oftenly been used is thermometer to check the temperature and there are lot of varieties and the uh, uh, lot of varieties of the thermometer uh, is being used all over the world the one the, uh, the most simplest type of the thermometer is named as simple thermometer uh, the further uh, advancement in this thermometer uh, give the name to six maximum maximum and minimum thermometer meter the third category the third type of the thermometer we we are being like used wet and dry bulb thermometer so thermometer to to keep the recording of uh, Uh, temperature thermometer is widely used and there are three important type of the thermometer we can see uh, on the board okay the th second category is the barometer the one is named as simple or the mercury barometer um second category of the barometer barometer okay barometer is the type of the instrument the weather instrument to uh, record the air pressure the second category of the barometer is the fortin barometer and the third one is anorite barometer now there is another third weather instrument which is named as rain gauge obviously to measure the amount of rainfall the quantity the 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 uh, diameter of the droplets of the rain so the instrument which is used is a uh, primitive instrument which is used to measure the amount of rainfall that is the rain gauge so this is all about let's discuss one by one okay here you can see a diagram of the simple thermometer and um, this is need to be drawn and here you can see uh, inside the thermometer uh, the blank area has been shown but uh, uh, what i want you need to uh, fill it with some gray color or any other uh, color um, the, the darker in the tone to represent the mercury to represent the mercury to show the mercury here so this is the diagram of the simple thermometer you need to draw in front of the uh, simple thermometer description on the blank page okay description will be on the lining page and in front of that description you need to draw it on the blank page as you can see in this copy so let's quickly move on after giving you the defin uh, the diagram i will give you the detail of the simple thermometer okay here you can see on the board the heading of the simple thermometer among all the type of the thermometer this is very simplest type of the thermometer and very primitive type of the thermometer normally been used just to record and just to keep in touch with the temperature but this thermometer is widely used to record or measure the temperature of the air okay so um, when we were talking about the 
the uh, hotness or the the warm type of the air we need to keep the thing and record the temperature of the air because once the air get warmer the surrounding area will feel the difference in the temperature okay uh, move on to the type of the weather instrument the simple thermometer uh, what is actually the methodology or how does it work out it is basically uh, and for that purpose we need to take all take a look on the uh, its construction so it is consisted of a glass tube having a bulb on one of its end as i i have shown in the uh, picture or the diagram that is basically a, a one side have a bulb and the other side of the tube is basically the seal see it is sealed it is closed and and that is made up of glass and inside of that glass very important thing is before sealing sealing the tube <coughs> before see, uh, sealing the tube air has been taken out and the bulb is filled with mercury and that mercury i was uh, telling you to need to uh, fill it with some color so to show that is the mercury and it has been shown in the glass tube so, okay so whenever you are going to draw the diagram you need to fill the mercury with some like gray color because actually uh, we can see the mercury it uh, normally and naturally in it is in the gray color okay so uh, in the glass tube i have told you uh, there are two ends of the tube the one is basically sealed and the other one has a bulb and when the temperature rises the mercury what does the mercury do at that time the mercury which is basically trapped in the glass tube that start rising upward in the bulb and when it is rising upward it shows that bulb is expanding and rising up on the contrary mercury in the bulb contracts and falls down whenever the temperature falls so we need to record this thing when the temperature is falling down then it means the temperature is decreasing and whenever the mercury rises upward it means the temperature is increasing and if we are using this simple thermometer to know the boil and the melting point of the or the um, um, boiling point of the water so we need to uh, take a look on the mercury level when it rises upward so when it reaches 200 degree it means this is the time when the water is basically boiling if we are using it for that purpose uh, normally it is being used just to uh, measure the temperature of the air and uh, there is uh, two type of the readings you can see on the simple thermometer the one is basically the type of the reading two types of the reading the one is the type of the reading which show the freezing point and the second one is basically the boiling point and the diagram which i have shown is basically of two types of the temperature because temperature can be calculated or measured in different type of the scale either uh, the celsius scale the most commonly used or the fahrenheit scale or the kelvin scale so uh, 100 degree centigrade will be considered as the boiling point for the water in degree celsius while in for fahrenheit scale it is the 212 degree so two type of the uh, thermometers which uh, are basically marked by 100 degree and 212 degree in the diagram or and you need to draw the diagram on the blank page of this this right okay move on to the second type of the thermometer okay here you can see this uh, second type of the uh, category of the thermometer the weather instrument we have seen the simple thermometer in simple thermometer we have just used a simplest type of the material to measure and calculate the temperature here we can see the second category that is the six maximum and the minimum thermometer this is the name and this shows how much it would be the efficient to record and measure the thermometer uh, temperature uh, it's a very special kind of the thermometer designed to know the maximum temperature at night because there was the dire need to know the temperature or uh, how much it could be at uh, during night time and it was invented by j6 and it is also popular to measure the minimum temperature during day time so this is this is against uh, the main rule because normally what we assume and what we need to do with the thermometer to record and measure the temperature 
temperature highest during daytime and lowest during night time but here you can see a difference in, in that and this is actually the main objective to design and draw the six weeks maximum and minimum thermometer in opposite and vice versa situation okay now we need to know how does it operate how does it work for that purpose we need to uh, check out its working and the construction this type of the instrument is consisted of u-shaped glass tube let's take a look on the picture or the diagram of the six maximum and minimum thermometer then you people will be able to better understand it okay here you can see the diagram of the six maximum and minimum thermometer with the minimum and the maximum um, uh, uh, readings have been written at the base and this u-shaped glass tube one end is basically seal and there you can see a darker material which is basically the mercury uh, sorry that is here it is in uh, the alcohol okay now uh, let's take a look on the on the construction of that uh, thermometer okay this instrument is consisted of a u-shaped glass tube and having a bulb on both ends uh, here you can see the bulb has been written uh, two times so please omit uh, bulb A is full of alcohol and bulb B is partially filled with alcohol so here you can see a difference in this material that alcohol has been used as compared to the mercury the movement of the mercury depends upon mercury is also being used but the movement of mercury depends upon the expansion and contraction contraction of the alcohol because coefficient that has been used is alcohol and it is six times is more efficient than mercury so that's the reason why we are able to record the temperature uh, maximum during night time and lowest during daytime by using this thermometer because here the material the coefficient material alcohol has been used which is six 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 times higher in their efficiency as compared to the mercury level so uh, uh, here the thing is like if we are using the same thermometer and uh, for uh, for recording the temperature then you get the results and the readings which are six times uh, more efficient more correct as compared to the normal one so this is how we can use this maximum and minimum thermometer and obviously these efficient type of the instruments and the advanced type of the instrument not being used by the common people there must be some usages some some practical usages and some other for some other purposes as well okay uh, as you know the third category of the thermometer wet and dry bulb thermometer is still left and barometer and the rain gauge is also required to be covered but this video will be too too long too much longer so i'm going to wind up this video here and the second uh, lecture two of practical five will be related to wet and dry bulb thermometer barometer and the rain gauge description so all uh, this is all about uh, i love this